Let's talk about the synergy of technology and conservation. Hello everyone, I'm Liz Quevedo. Let's dig deeper into tech for nature. It is possible to address environmental challenges through rapid technological advancement and its appropriate application. In the right hands and with the right partnerships, it can revolutionize how humanity conserves, protects and restores nature. To learn more about Tech for Nature, I am joined by Gary Maidman, Huawei's Tech for All Communications Manager. Gary, a pleasure to have you here today. And please tell us, what is the Tech for Nature partnership? Hi, Elise. So Tech for Nature was launched in 2020 by International Union for Conservation of Nature and Huawei. It's a global partnership that aims to promote technological innovation as a tool to meet nature conservation goals worldwide. It's aligned with our Tech4 initiative and the IUCN Green List, and it represents our joint vision that technology, when applied appropriately, can help mitigate threats facing protected and conserved areas. Threats like biodiversity loss, climate change and habitat destruction. It's also the first time that either Huawei or IUCN has entered a major partnership in each other's domain of expertise. And what we're seeing is that when we work together, and that also means involving local partners and local communities, is that we can achieve much more than if we acted alone. Absolutely, Gary. Thank you for that, because working together is definitely key. Now, phase two of Tech for Nature was launched towards the end of last year. And if I'm not mistaken, it will run from 2023 to 2026. Can you explain a bit more about what happened in phase one? Sure, Elise. Uh, well, beginning in 2020, phase one saw projects running in five countries. Uh, that involved developing scenario-specific solutions in a range of ecosystems with IUCN and local partners. Um, in Mauritius, for example, the aim is to restore coral reef in the Indian Ocean. The project involved growing coral fragments in coral nurseries and transplanting those to degraded areas of reef. On the tech side, the solution uses underwater cameras, 4G and digital power to monitor things like algae buildup in the nurseries. And after transplantation, we monitored the mobility of species and the factors that impact their reproductive success at the restoration sites. So far, we transplanted 25,000 coral fragments and monitoring has shown an increase in local biodiversity. In Mexico, the Tech for Nature project mainly aims to monitor and protect uh, jaguars in Zillum State Reserve in Yucatan. The solution uses visual and audio monitoring devices, cloud and AI, to understand what's going on in the ecosystem, including how climate change affects biodiversity. So far, the project has collected around 80,000 photos, uh, 600,000 audio recordings, and extensive video footage of wild animals. And that helps uh, researchers understand the distribution and behaviors of different species. So far, we've identified 146 species, including the presence of seven wild jaguars. This data can provide insights for habitat protection, research and monitoring during the breeding season and when the cats are active. And another aim is to use the insights from this project to help Yucatan state government form a key biological corridor in southeast Mexico. And closer to home for you, Elise, in Barcelona province in Spain, we're studying the impact of tourism on the Benelli's Eagle. The solution uses uh, GPS receivers, cloud and cameras to see the effects of human activity on nesting sites and also the eagle's reproductive success. That's helping the park's administration to formulate new management and protection measures based on precise data. Um, in China, acoustic monitoring of the world's rare estate, the Hainan Gibbon, aims to help this critically endangered species repopulate. There's just 37 remain in the world. So far, we've collected more than 100,000 samples of their vocalizations, and the aim is to identify individual animals and help researchers 
understand their distribution and priorities for habitat restoration. And in Switzerland, the focus is on improving the transparency and traceability of carbon sequestration in protected forest areas. The solution uses a new blockchain methodology de developed by TechFinage partner Perini Foundation. And biodiversity interventions from 2021 onwards have shown that improved management in the protected forest area has resulted in an additional CO2 sink of 40 tonnes per hectare. Wow, Gary, thank you so much for sharing concrete examples. And you've given so many facts and also figures that it gives us a better picture of the implementation, which I think is what we're all always after when it comes to technology. As I always say, don't just talk the talk, but walk the walk. So moving forward, Gary, what will happen in phase two? Okay, Lee, so uh, we'll be launching new projects in Brazil, Kenya, Turkey, China, Spain, and Mexico. A key aim of phase two is to expand collaboration between the technology and nature conservation sectors and involve more people, partners, and countries. Uh, the continuation of the partnership will also contribute to achieving the 30 by 30 target defined in the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework. That target calls for 30% of the Earth's land and sea areas to be conserved by establishing protected areas and effective area-based conservation measures. Something I always mention, Gary, is the importance of collaboration. So I am very happy to see partnerships are obviously a key feature of Tech for Nature. Can you explain to us a bit more about what that means for this program? Uh, you're right, Elise. Alongside the tech, partnerships are at the heart of Tech for Nature, as well as IUCN's leading global expertise in nature conservation and our own tech expertise. We've worked with a range of local partners and communities in the projects I mentioned. They bring a wealth of local knowledge and also their own expertise to projects. Uh, examples include universities like the University of Girona in Spain, conservation organisations like the Perini Foundation in Switzerland, uh, protected area management organisations like the Hainan Institute of National Parks in China, and in Mexico, NGOs like Sea Mines and Rainforest Connection, who I know you're familiar with, and also various local governments. Uh, of course, there's local communities. In Mexico, the Jaguar project also involves the local community in areas like formulating policy and mangrove restoration. Uh, also, a number of rangers who now work in the reserve were former hunters. Uh, in Mauritius, training was provided for local fishermen in coral restoration and education programs were set up for local children about the importance of uh, restoring and protecting the reef. So when we launched Tech for Nature with IUCN, we were a relative newcomer in the nature conservation field. Phase one has really enabled us to broaden what we know by working with IUCN and local organizations groups, communities, and partners. And that's something we certainly plan to continue in phase two. Um, it also ties in with the theme of this year's Tech for Nature Summit, which is enabling nature conservation together. Now, Gary, that sounds like a date for the diary. So that's June 5th. And then what can we expect from this year's summit and also how can we tune in to watch it, which is the most important part? Well, Elise, as you said, this year's summit is taking place on June the 5th, and that coincides with World Environment Day. And we're co-hosting uh, co the summit with IUCN. We're inviting partners, experts in the broader Tech for Nature community to, to discuss the partnership, projects, nature conservation trends, and officially launch the phase two projects. Anyone can tune in to the live stream on our Tech Cool account on X. Awesomeness. Thank you so much for your time today, Gary. And there you have it. It is great to see tech giants like Huawei, 
making an impact and leading by example to take these vital steps towards scaling up nature conservation outcomes using innovative technology and digital solutions. Make sure you follow, as Gary said, the Tech for All socials or connect with Gary for more insights into this topic. I will put the link below. I'm Liz Quevedo. See you all at the Tech for Nature live stream. I'll be watching.